Alright guys, so for the second part of kind of advanced lighting, I wanted to take a look at how to light uh, maybe non-architectural objects. Uh, this is a, an IKEA alarm clock I had modeled a while ago and had exploded it to do some drawings. Uh, but I wanted to do some nice renderings. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is you know set up some type of studio backdrop. So what I had done is to just draw this kind of curve here. I'm going to turn off the grid. It's, uh, there. So I uh, have just a curve that I can use as a backdrop, and I'm just simply going to extrude that. Extrude. There we go. And bring it behind my object. So now, uh, when I'm looking at it, you can see that, that there will be a nice gradient fall off. Uh, you can even hide these lines by just clicking off the ISO curves here. So you can see that it you know, it's, would have a nice uh, gradient in the background uh, and let you focus on the object. Uh, to set up my view, I'm just actually going to use the front view. I already have it set up here, but if I go back to front, I'm going to be really zoomed in. So I'll zoom out here, and there's the clock, uh, and it's just you know flat orthographic projection, which I don't think it looks all that attractive. So if I go to viewport properties, if I right-click front, go to viewport properties, I can tell it to do perspectival, and I want uh, maybe 32 millimeter lens. And so now you can see uh, I've got a much better view. I don't want to. I don't want to rotate around. So I just want to pan. So holding shift and right clicking, I can then move my view, you know, kind of left and right. Uh, but I don't want to do something like this where I then, you know, really move. I wanted to be looking pretty straight on the object. So I had that view already set up, and I, I use name views to save it. So here I can just come back to set view, front perspective, and, and there's my view of the object. Um, the next thing we're going to have to do is set up some type of lighting. Uh, and to do that, it's a little tricky, but uh, we're going to just use simple uh, rectangular lights. So I'll draw one here in my right viewport. Uh, so I'll hit F8 to turn on ortho. These can just be square. So there's the first light, and you can see here in plan, it's, uh, it's pointing that way. So I'll just rotate it, uh, turn off ortho, rotate it this way. I'll move it in closer to the object here. Um, you can see here in, in, my, in my view, it's not in the scene, and it's just shining, and you can see it's illuminating the back here. Uh, I can also come into the properties of this light. With it selected, I can come over to properties, use the drop down to select light, and change its color, its intensity. Uh, maybe I'll do just a light blue for the color. And I also don't want it shining just straight back, so I'm going to use the rotate rotate 3D command and select the light and I'll draw an axis roughly in plane with it like this and then I'll tilt it down uh, so now you can see here in, in the perspective the light is shining down towards the object. Uh, the next thing I'm doing is going to just copy this light and in plan slide it over. You can see how much brighter the scene is now. I'm just rotate it around so it's facing into the object and again with rotate, rotate 3D um, I'm going to want to draw an axis there and, and, and see if I can just change the, the light conditions a little bit so now it's kind of more from the top. Uh, the, the last thing I want to do is actually I'm going to rotate it a little bit further um, inward so that it's, it's, this light is actually lighting up more of the background than the other one. So one's lighting the background, one's lighting uh, the object. So with this light maybe I won't use uh, blue but perhaps I'll just use a slight reddish hue for the light, which will come out a little pinkish, but that's great. So I have those two lights in place uh, with my front perspective open. I'm just going to go to my rendering options and just uh, restore defaults. Um, so this is the utmost default settings that uh, V-Ray comes with. I can look, I uh, have a physical camera turned on. I'm going to turn it off. Uh, my output size is really, really small, but that's fine for the first test. So let's give it a shot. Alright, so you can probably tell already that it's going to be fairly blown out. Uh, the images get too much brightness and going back in and tweaking those physical camera settings will, will probably bring us back down to where we need to be. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just cancel this, it's not worth it. So camera, turn on the physical camera. 300 seems like it's awfully high, but I'll give it a shot. There we go, actually it's, it's looking pretty good. Uh, I've already applied materials to the object. 
Uh, that's something you can cover in, uh, in past tutorials. Uh, if you want to take a look, I'll link those in the video here. Um, and we have some weird shadows, um, but you know that that's okay. Um, those are incredibly odd shadows. Oh, I know why that is. Let's see. Uh, right now, uh, if we go into the environment, we have a global illuminated skylight and a background light going on. And these two shadows here are the lights themselves. So if I come back out and click on this light, I'm going to close the options here, click on the light, again go to the properties and drop down to light, I can turn it invisible so you know that, that shadow wouldn't appear. Same with this one. Um, if I... Oops. If I bring back up my render frame, which is here, uh, these shadows, I mean, obviously that's cast by the object floating above the, the backdrop, and I'm okay with that. That's, that's fine for me. Uh, but these two weird ones have to go. Um, so let's do a little bit higher settings. If we um, come to output and just get the image, lock it, and then go to 1024, uh, do a quick render it here. Oh, I selected the wrong viewport. This is the viewport I want. All right, so I'll fast forward through this. All right, so here's the render. It's complete. Uh, again, it's probably a little brighter than I want, um, and these shadows are awfully sharp. Uh, but just like in the last tutorial I uploaded, uh, I have a feeling that moving the lights further away from the objects would really help those shadows be downplayed. We're also getting a couple little spotches here, which looks like it's kind of refracted through the glass, which, you know, might be nice. Um, I'm pretty happy with it, but let's see what we can do to kind of step it up one more notch. Um, let's see. So first thing I'm going to do is just to move these lights a little further away from the object. Uh, and I'm just actually going to right click the render button here uh, and in doing so I can just render a test piece so I'm dragging here just the part I want to render and before we had these really sharp shadows and we still do um, I'm gonna take a look and see if I can figure out why that is alright so the, just took a second and uh, kinda tweaked with some settings here um, and what I was finding is that the environment, the GI skylight, and the background map were causing those shadows. These two lights, I mean, cause some shadows, but nothing that dramatic. So here, if I just re-render a small portion of it, um, you can see it's, it's you know, fairly soft shadows here. And, and that's more the feeling I'm looking for. Uh, you can see some of the brightness is definitely gone now. Um, but the last thing I want to do is talk about how we can use some HDRI maps to, to add more realism to the scene. And so for that, we're actually going to enable these things back on. So the background, I'm going to turn it on and just set the background to white. And uh, it's, it's, right now it has a map, uh, and I'm going to say none. Uh, so using M for map here, the lowercase means there's nothing in there. Uppercase means there's something in there. So white, a value of 1, and no map. For the GI skylight, uh, I'm actually going to use a map again. Uh, but I'm not going to use a sky map. I'm going to use a bitmap. Uh, it's going to be an environmental map, and it's going to be based off the mirror ball setting. Um, if I open up, let's see, Photoshop here, I can show you. <clears throat> this map came with V-Ray for Rhino. It's the uh, living day. It's a living room scene. And you can see that here there's just a, a mirror ball that's been set up and a picture's been taken of it. You can actually see the person taking the picture. Uh, this is pretty good, but uh, there's a lot of detail in it that I, I don't really need, and it's just going to slow down my rendering. So what I did is went went to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and went to 12. And here you can see that there's some colors and reflections and two bright spots. And what V-Ray will do is actually use these bright spots uh, to illuminate the scene, help illuminate the scene. The, 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 lens, the, or sorry, the lights we have are still there, and they'll still uh, you know, be the primary source of light, but this will be a secondary one. So I've already saved that, and what I'm going to do is, uh, is for the GI skylight, it's a bitmap, like I said, with the mirror ball, and my map is going to be this, I saved as blurry. So I'll use that, and if we update here, you can see how dark it is. So I'm going to multiply that brightness by 3, and there we have it. Uh, I'm going to set this to white. I don't think that actually matters once you're using the map, but why not? Uh, and the last part is the reflections that happen in the glass and on the metal of the clock. 
I want them to reflect kind of that living room scene. So uh, again, I'll go into maps. Let's say I'm using a bitmap. It's an environment. It's a mirror ball. And for this one, I'm not going to use the blurry version. I want crisp reflections. I'll use the, the living room day. Open that. Uh, and I'll set my multiplier to 1.5 so it has some, some brightness too. And there you can see the detail. Uh, so with that set up, I'm going to give the front perspective here one more rendering. And I'll fast forward through this and meet you on the other side. All right, so the rendering's done. Um, it looks pretty good. Uh, the clock itself, uh, I'm really happy with. You can see, if I zoom in a little bit, how uh, just the material has little highlights of you know what was the HDRI room. Uh, we don't ever see any of that detail, um, but I think it just adds a kind of a layer of realism to it. The one thing we're finding is the the backdrop is not working out. It's it's splotchy, and even in in some of the rendering, it's it's splotchy too. Uh, so we're going to open up the settings here and just take a look. With the default settings, uh, the indirect illumination uh, uses two things, the irritance map and the deter de deterministic Monte Carlo. Uh, I'm just going to change the settings for the irritance map. Um, I'm going to drop this down to negative 6, uh, the subdivisions here to 100, and the max samples to 80. So with more samples and kind of a more threshold that the, the irritance map is allowed to work in, it gets to a finer level of resolution, which will hopefully eliminate any of the splotchiness we had seen previously and leave us with a you know, kind of polished finished product. So I'll go ahead and fast forward through the, this rendering and uh, we'll catch it on the other side. Uh, so there's the final image. Uh, you can see most of the splotchiness is gone. We still have a little bit here, and I think that's just caused by the, the way the lights have been set up. You can see here in the plan view, it's it's kind of a, uh, a void spot where we're not shining any of our direct lights over here, so there's just not a lot going on. Um, but overall, I'm pretty happy with the image. It looks very nice. It's a fairly low resolution, so I'm not going to get anything too refined. I uh, didn't want to take the time to do that for just this tutorial. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, if you guys have more questions, let me know. I don't have uh, you know too much experience with kind of these settings. Mostly, I just use the sunlight and uh, kind of you know, skylight settings. Uh, primarily, I render buildings and interiors, which that works great for me. Um, but this is something I'm definitely interested in exploring and, and doing better. Uh, so there you go. Thanks.